Double Wasp, commonly known as the R2800, is one of the latest Pratt & Whitney Wasp developments. It is of the twin-row radial air-cooled type with two banks of nine cylinders each. The engine has a five and three-quarters bore and a stroke of six inches, resulting in a total displacement of 2,800 cubic inches. The R2800 is similar in many respects to previous Pratt & Whitney double-row engines. One difference, however, is the use of a dual-type, thin-pillar DF18RN magneto and two distributors separately mounted on the reduction gear housing. The magneto houses two breaker assemblies, one on each side. When viewing the magneto from the rear of the engine, the right breaker controls the left distributor which fires the rear spark plug. And the left breaker controls the right distributor, which fires the front spark plug. To reach the breaker assembly, remove the three screws holding the cover plates on either side. Each breaker assembly contains a ground and a high tension connection. The right breaker is connected to contact VR1 and HT1. while the left breaker is connected to contact DR2 and HT2. The correct procedure for timing this engine consists of three distinct steps. Check and adjust magneto before installation. Set the engine at firing position. Synchronize magneto and distributors to engine. The first step in timing can be best performed on the bench with the aid of a timing light. To check the synchronization of the breaker points, first connect the timing light wires to the ground connections marked VR1 and VR2. Ground the other wire to the magneto housing. Now, rotate the splined magneto drive shaft so the cam turns in the direction of the arrow on the cam. Rotate until the lobe, indicated by a dot, is about to open the breaker point. With the cams in this position, a straight edge placed on the step of each cam should align with the timing mark in the post of the breaker plate, and both timing lights should show that the breaker points have opened simultaneously. If the breakers are not adjusted properly, the lights will not go on at the same time. The breakers may be adjusted so that the contact points open when the breaker cam is in proper relation to the timing mark on the post, not for any fixed clearance between the contact points. To make this adjustment, loosen the two screws which fasten the movable breaker point support to the breaker plate. By means of the eccentric screw, adjust the movable support so the proper timing light flashes on, thus indicating that the points are just opening when the straight edge on the cam step coincides with the timing mark. After adjusting the breaker point, re-tighten the two holding screws. And again, rotate the magneto drive shaft so both lights operate simultaneously. The second step in timing the engine is to set it at its firing position. 
This, of course, is done after the harness has been taken off. Now, remove the front spark plug from each cylinder. In timing the engine, next establish the number one cylinder in top center compression stroke position. Carefully place the propeller shaft turning bar in position on the shaft so as not to damage the shaft flying. Rotate the propeller shaft counterclockwise until the number one piston is on its compression stroke. Determine the correct stroke by placing the thumb over the number one cylinder spark plug hole. When the piston is coming up on its compression stroke, the pressure will tend to force the thumb away from the hole. Now, install and tighten the timing pointer on the propeller shaft. And insert the top center indicator in the front spark plug hole of the number one cylinder. Now, slowly turn the propeller shaft in a clockwise direction at least 45 degrees. Then return counterclockwise until the top center light flashes on. When the light flashes on, scribe a line on the outside diameter of the thrust plate to show the position of the timing pointer. Continue to turn the propeller shaft slowly in the same direction until the top center light goes out. Now, again, scribe another line on the thrust plate to indicate the position of the timing pointer. Using a pair of dividers, bisect the distance between the two scribed lines. This point indicates the correct position for the timing pointer when the number one piston is at top dead center. Now, slowly turn the propeller shaft back in a clockwise direction, approximately 45 degrees, to take up the backlash. Then return it again in a counterclockwise direction until the pointer on the propeller shaft aligns with the top center mark just slides on the thrust plate. The engine is now properly set with the number one piston at top center of its compression stroke and ready for the installation of the timing equipment. The timing segment has markings on both sides. One side has spark advance marks for A series engines, 25 degrees, and the other for B-series, 20 degrees. Since this engine is B-series, which has a 20-degree spark advance, use this side of the template. Note that there are four lines scribed on the face of this segment, one indicating top center position, and the other three indicating spark advance position for the various reduction gear ratios used in R2800 engines, 5 to 2, 2 to 1, and 16 to 9. After loosening three of the nuts which hold the thrust plate in position, fasten the timing segment in place. Since this engine has a 2 to 1 reduction gear ratio, the pointer ultimately will be set at this position on the segment. Loosen the timing pointer attached to the propeller shaft and align it with the top center mark on the timing segment. Then tighten it. Never turn the propeller shaft until the pointer is tightened in this position. Now, turn the propeller shaft again in a clockwise direction for at least 45 degrees. Then return it in a counterclockwise direction until the timing pointer aligns with a 2 to 1 spark advance mark on the timing segment. The engine is now ready for the third step timing and synchronizing the magneto and distributors. With the engine set in the firing position of the number one cylinder and the distributor housings removed, place the distributor timing template on one distributor adapter face with a small pin in the rear screw hole 
so the indicating projection is next to the front cylinder. This timing template is unnecessary on later engines, which have scribed marks on the adaptive parting face. These marks correspond to the indicating projection of the template and should be used exactly like the projection for timing purposes. Now loosen the two nuts which hold the finger to the rotor and move the finger until a large electrode aligns with the indicating projection on the template or the scribed mark on the adapter parting face. Being careful not to disturb the alignment of the finger, tighten the two nuts to secure it in position. Be sure to cotter pin the two nuts. Time the other distributor in the same manner. After the distributors have been checked, install the ignition manifold. Screw down the distributor cover and safety wire the screws. Now, take the magneto which you have checked and on which you have synchronized the breaker point and install it on the engine. Assemble the magneto on the engine so that connections marked number one are toward the front and fit a rubber seal on the shoulder of the mounting flange of the magneto. But do not tighten the four nuts which hold the magneto in place. Now connect the timing lights to the ground connections on either side of the magneto and ground the third wire to the engine. Turn the magneto counterclockwise through the range allowed by the slot in its mounting base. Then reverse it clockwise until both the timing lights indicate the breaker points have opened. Next, secure the magneto in place with the mounting studs and nuts, being careful not to move it when tightening the nuts. Then recheck the magneto again. This time, rotate the engine propeller shaft with a timing pointer in place. First, rotate the shaft clockwise at least 45 degrees, then back in a normal counterclockwise direction until the timing lights indicate the breaker point had just opened. At this point, the timing pointer should align with the 2 to 1 spark advance mark on the timing segment and the straight edge should align with a mark on the post. If this recheck shows that the previous operations have been performed correctly, tighten and wire the magneto stud nut. Install breaker cover plate. Fine workmanship is essential to high quality and dependability in engine maintenance, and its importance cannot be overemphasized. Since the day it was founded, Pratt and Whitney Aircraft has believed consistently that there is no substitute for quality.